Mars is a lot more interesting than the dead, empty desert world it's often portrayed as. Hosting some of the most dramatic landscapes in the solar system, from the tallest volcano to the longest canyon, and tons of other features, it's understandable why it's so well studied. Because of how much we've studied Mars, we know for a fact that it used to have oceans. The northern basin, at least, was covered in an ocean that likely covered the majority of the northern hemisphere, while craters in the south were likely filled with lakes and seas. But most of the water is gone, as it evaporated when Mars lost most of its atmosphere. However, some water still exists on Mars today. The polar ice caps are obvious examples of this, as the north and south poles still host sheets of water, ice, and CO2. But the Martian water reserves don't end there. Utopia Planitia gets seasonal coverings of frost, as the Viking landers saw. There's also direct evidence of flowing water in Hellas Basin, Mars's deepest point, hinting at the possibility of an underground river in the region. There is also some evidence of far greater amounts of water, but no direct proof. Until now, that is, because we just found evidence for a lot of water, enough to fill oceans. Data from NASA's now-dead InSight lander has been reanalyzed, and it suggests that there's a massive layer of water about 7 to 13 miles, or 10 to 20 kilometers, below the Martian crust. This isn't 100% confirmed yet, but the evidence is very strong. This discovery's been hyped up a lot recently, and it is deserved. This is a major discovery. There's potentially enough water here to restore the Martian oceans if it was released. However, the water is not in the form of an underground ocean. There is a lot of water, but if you found yourself underground, you wouldn't be able to swim in it. This is because all the water is trapped between rock particles. So it isn't a layer of water as it is miles and miles of wet sand. This, unfortunately, isn't a subsurface ocean like those that Europa and Enceladus and Ganymede and Callisto and Titan and every other major solid object in the outer solar system has. Don't get me wrong, even though this layer of water isn't an ocean, it's still incredibly important. This is the largest water reserve ever found on Mars, and it's even more than the amount of water that was thought to fill the ancient oceans. So, there's a huge, miles-deep layer of wet rocks below the crust. But what exactly does this mean for life and colonization? If you've seen some other videos on my channel, you'll be aware that I'm against colonizing Mars. Not because of the harsh environment, but because there simply is no reason to do so right now, and everything we want to get from Mars we can get easier from the moon. The moon is the only world in the solar system where colonization is actually profitable, and I have a full video about why colonizing Mars is a bad idea. In that video, I did say that one of the few advantages Mars has over the moon is that it has more water. This new discovery only solidifies that advantage. As much as I don't want Mars colonization to happen, as it's a waste of resources compared to colonizing the moon, which is a good idea, it doesn't change the fact that a lot of people are dead set on doing it. And the people are going to try to settle on the radioactive dust ball 200 million miles and two years away from the nearest help, instead of the gold mine sitting in Earth's orbit, they're going to need all the help they can get. And having easily accessible water is going to be the biggest part of that. Unfortunately, this new Martian water reserve is going to be extraordinarily difficult to tap into, because it is, at minimum, 7 miles below the surface. For comparison, the Mariana Trench is 6.8 miles deep. And the Cola Superdeep Borehole, the deepest hole ever dug, is 7.6 miles deep. Digging on Mars will be slightly easier than digging on Earth, since there's less internal heat. The Russians stopped trying to dig the Cola Superdeep Borehole because it got too hot. That problem won't happen on Mars. But that doesn't change the fact that this is extremely deep, and at the limits of what we could possibly dig. It's going to take enormous amounts of effort just to dig down that deep, let alone return water from the surface. The closest analog to this is oil drilling rigs, but they only get maximum 2 miles below the surface. So we need to somehow get something bigger than an oil rig just to start getting this water. So, for colonization, this new water layer won't matter much. There are much more easily accessible water sources on Mars, like the poles. Utopia Planitia and Arcadia Planitia are also expected to have some amount of water below them, and as I said earlier, Hellas Basin has seasonal flows of liquid water. If you're looking for water on Mars, anywhere is better than this newly discovered water layer. Of course, that doesn't change the fact that this is the single biggest water reserve on Mars by far, with oceans worth of water. That's a lot bigger than the reserves of the Poles or Hellas Basin. However, we don't need oceans of water for a colony. A small lake could support millions, and we already know of water sources on Mars that have lakes worth of water. There's really no reason this large an amount of water would be needed anytime soon. Humans don't need the entire water content of the Pacific Ocean just to support, say, Hawaii. And Mars colonies will have just a fraction of the population of Hawaii for a very long time. That also brings me to another point. The Pacific Ocean is, as you should hopefully know, salt water. You can't drink it. And if salt water is bad, then Martian water stuck deep in rocks will likely be even worse to drink. We'll have to desalinate it just to be able to drink it, more so than we already have to desalinate ocean water. 
Of course, the other Martian water reserves have this problem as well. The water in Hellas Basin is likely so salty it acts more like brine, but the polar water could be fairly clean. But even the Hellas Basin water will still most likely be a lot cleaner than this underground water. So, all in all, if you're looking for water to support a colony, this underground water layer isn't the way to go. You try to instead get water at the poles, or Arcadia or Utopia Planitia, or Hellas Basin. However, just because humans won't be using this water doesn't mean other forms of life aren't there. The evidence of past life on Mars has been growing a lot recently. The evidence of microbes existing on Mars in the past, or even currently, is surprisingly strong. I usually avoid talking about alien life on this channel, as it's massively overhyped. That's also why I made a video about how a lot of the exoplanets people think could be habitable, like Kepler-22b, probably aren't. However, Mars has places to get energy. It gets plenty of sunlight, and despite what you may have heard, Mars is still very much geologically active. It's just that the activity is extremely limited, and eruptions only occur on the timescales of millions of years. It also has environments where life could live. There's evidence of lakes existing under ice sheets on the South Pole, similar to the lakes under Antarctica on Earth, which we have found life in. If I had to guess, I would put the possibility of life existing on Mars at higher than 50%. I'd put the chances of it currently having life much lower, and the chances that this life is native to Mars at basically zero. However, life existing on Mars and life having formed on Mars are two very different things. Also remember that I'm not a scientist, and those numbers are entirely my guess based on the little evidence we have, so don't get your hopes up. In my recent video called Does the Moon Have Life, I talk about panspermia, the process of life from one planet somehow getting to and colonizing another. This is why we know for a fact that the moon does currently have life on it, we've been accidentally bombarding the moon with it for billions of years. Mars is a lot further away from Earth than the moon, but theoretically could be close enough for bacteria from Earth to get to Mars via an asteroid impact. And if this has been going on for billions of years, then if we do find life on Mars, I would bet a lot of money that we'll find out that that life originates from Earth. This new water layer doesn't really affect the prospects for life on Mars. It's deep and isolated enough that we don't really expect life to be down there, and even if it is, it's not an ocean. It's a layer of wet rocks, which isn't very conducive to life. And, as I said in other videos, life doesn't need just water, it needs energy. And while Mars does have geologic activity, it isn't nearly enough to sustain an ecosystem. And because its water layer is below the crust, sunlight doesn't reach it. This means there's no way for any life inside it to get energy, which will cause it to die out very quickly. Just like with Martian colonization, if you're looking for life on Mars, then this water layer isn't the way to go. You'll have much better odds if you look in all the other water sources I've already mentioned. This layer of water is going to change everything we thought we knew about Mars. It has more water than should be possible, more than Mars ever had in oceans. And if Mars has it, then the other inner solar system worlds, like the Moon or Venus, could have something similar. The inner solar system is extremely dry compared to the outer system, but the difference may not be as large as we think. This was discovered by the InSight lander, which analyzed data from Mars quakes to figure out what type of material Mars is made of. No other mission on any other world has had the capability that InSight did, and there currently aren't any plans to make new InSight-style missions. But with how much InSight learned from Mars, more missions like this should be extremely high priority. Finding a water reserve like this on the moon would change everything about lunar colonization, because as far as we know, lunar water is extremely limited. There are no other missions currently on Mars that could study this more. Hopefully we can figure out more about it soon, and hopefully use the data we find to learn more about other worlds closer to home. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.